Welcome to the second part of the concept bridge from ACP GMAT on the topic overview of inguinal hernia in children. I am Dr. Nesmani. Similar sessions for uh, concept bridge are telecast in YouTube address. Please note down youtube.com slash ACPGMAT. You can have the links to YouTube from facebook.com slash acpgmat and also get updated by subscribing in the part one we talked about introduction definition of hydrocele hernia incarceration strangulation and also we were discussing about embryology of testes and ovaries and also the anatomy of the various types of uh, hernias. In the second part, we shall discuss about the epidemiology, incidence, incarceration associated condition, then clinical features, no mass, reducible mass, incarcerated mass, then the differential diagnosis, imaging and laboratory evaluation. The remaining part we will discuss in part 3. So let us go to the epidemiology. Incidence primary inguinal hernia occurs in about 1 to 5 percent of all newborns and 9 to 11 percent of those born prematurely. Among low and very low birth weight infants, the incidence of inguinal hernia varies by birth weight as follows 500 to 1000 gram, 30 to 42 percentage, 1000 to 1500 gram, 10 percentage, 1500 to 2000 gram, 3 percentage. The incidence is highest during the first year of life and peaks during the first month. The incidence in boys is 3 to 4 times higher than in girls, right side being more commonly than uh, in both sexes. The right sided preponderance is related to the later descent of the right testicles and the later obliteration of the processes genialis. Incidence of bilateral hernia is approximately 10% in full term, 50% in premature and low birth weight infants. Incarceration. The incidence of incarceration ranges from 14 to 31%, usually occurring in infants younger than 1 year of age among children with incarcerated inguinal hernia. As many as 85% occur before the first birthday. Incarceration is the presenting sign of the hernia in as many as 65% of the cases. It occurs more frequently in right sided hernias as compared with left sided ones. 17 versus 7 percentage. Incarceration occurs more frequently in girls compared with boys, 17.2 versus 12 percentage. In girls, when incarceration occurs, an ovary rather than intestine is typically involved. Some others describe an increased incidence of incarceration in preterm infants. However, one review of inguinal hernia in 251 in infants younger than 6 months, including 89 preterm infants, found that incarceration was less common in preterm than in term infants 13 versus 24 percentage the references are given at the end in this presentation i thank all the references given associated conditions in hernias are more common in children with abdominal wall defects like uh, eagle barrett uh, syndrome or prune belly syndrome Conditions that increase intra-abdominal pressure like continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, ventriculoperitoneal shunt, ascites, chronic respiratory disease, then diseases like connective tissue disorder, ehlers danlos syndrome, then abnormalities of the genitourinary system like ambiguous genitalia, hypospadias, bladder extrophy, cryptorchid testis, or the family history inguinal hernia
Complete androgen insensitivity should be suspected in phenotypically normal female infants or children who have inguinal hernia or inguinal or labial mass. As many as 1 to 2 percent of girls with inguinal hernia may have this disorder. In a survey of androgen insensitivity diagnosis and management in United Kingdom, inguinal hernia was the presenting complaint in 22 of 29 people that is 76 percentage and as present in 28 of 29 that is 96 percent phenotypically female children with complete androgen insensitivity. Clinical features. Children with inguinal hernia may present with clinical features that include history of an intermittent mass a mass that is reducible or incarceration, no mass. Most children with an inguinal hernia have a history of an intermittent bulge in the groin that may have been noted at times of increased intra-abdominal pressure such as straining or crying. They are usually asymptomatic when this occurs. An inguinal mass is frequently not present on examination. Maneuvers to increase intra-abdominal pressure and demonstrate the hernia are often un un uh, unsuccessful. The silk sign is a palpable silky thickening of the cord that may sometimes be appreciated by placing a single finger parallel to the inguinal canal at the level of the pubic tubercle and rubbing it from side to side. This is not a reliable finding however. Reducible mass. Often families seek medical care because an inguinal mass has developed that is not spontaneously reduced. Non-specific symptoms such as irritability, decreased appetite may be reported. Inguinal mass can extend to the scrotum. Should not be tender on examination. Incarcerated mass. Infe uh, infants with an incarcerated inguinal hernia usually are irritable and cry. Vomiting and abdominal distension may develop depending on the duration of incarceration and whether or not intestinal obstruction has occurred. Physical examination of children with incarcerated inguinal hernias usually is diagnostic. A firm, discrete inguinal mass which may extend to the scrotum or labia majora can be palpated in the groin. The mass usually is tender, often is surrounded by edema with erythema of the overlying skin. The testicle may appear dark blue because of venous congestion caused by pressure on the spermatic cord. Differential diagnosis. Clinical features generally distinguish inguinal hernia from other causes of an inguinal mass. These include the following. One is hydrocele. An acute hydrocele generally involves only the scrotum. No mass is palpated in the area of internal ring. This is an in contrast to a communicating hydrocele which is in fact a hernia containing peritoneal fluid. Hydrocele, transilluminate, usually are cystic, irreducible, and non tender. An acute hydrocele of the spermatic cord may occasionally be difficult to distinguish from an incarcerated inguinal hernia. Varicocele. Varicocele typically seen in adolescent age group are dilated veins of the paminiform plexus of the spermatic cord. They usually increase with the valsalum maneuver to produce a large soft scrotal mass or the bag of worms that decompresses in recumbent position. Testicular torsion. Testicular torsion causes severe pain and vomiting. The affected testicles is typically swollen, tender, retracted to a external ring. The cremastric reflex is absent on the affected side.
torsional appendix testis. Torsional appendix testis produces tender nodule on the purple of the testicle that may appear as a blue dot once the tors the tissue has become necrotic. Retractile testis. An inguinal mass may represent a, a retractile testis that has moved into the inguinal canal as a result of an exaggerated cremastric reflex. It can be distinguished from an inguinal hernia by bringing the testis into the scrotum. The finger is then placed transversely across the top of the scrotum at the base of the penis. This will prevent a retractile testis from ascending into the inguinal canal when the cremastric reflex is again elicited. In addition, an empty hemiscrotal sac suggests an abnormal testicular location. Femoral hernia. Children with the femoral hernia have swelling in the upper thigh below the inguinal ligament, usually with cramping abdominal pain. Despite the differences in clinical presentation, Femoral hernias are misdiagnosed preoperatively by surgeons in 35% and by referring physician in 85% of the cases. Inguinal lymphadenitis. Children with inguinal lymphadenitis usually have history of infection or trauma with a normal appearing inguinal canal and scrotum. Lymph nodes are located lateral and inferior to the inguinal canal. Testicular cancer. Testicular cancer usually presents as a painless mass discovered by the patient or clinician on physical examination. Although rapidly growing germ cell tumor may cause acute scrotal pain secondary to hemorrhage and infarction. Other common signs are testicular enlargement or swelling. So that was about the differential diagnosis. Now going on to imaging, plain abdominal radiograph of limited use in evaluation of a patient with an incarcerated hernia. An ultrasound examination may be helpful when the etiology of an acute growing swelling cannot be determined on clinical examination. The reported diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound is 93% for acute growing condition. Laboratory evaluation. Routine laboratory work is not helpful in evaluation of patients with hernia. One study reported white blood cell count of 4,621,000 cells uh, per milliliter in 69 um, children with incarcerated hernia and found uh, no correlation between the white blood cell count and the degree of vascular compromise of the entrapped bowel described at surgery. Karyotyping should be considered when a testicle is palpable in the inguinal canal or found at herniography in phenotypic female since there is an association between androgen insensitivity and inguinal hernia. So we shall now go to the part 3 for the management. This is the end of this uh, part 2. Hope that this session was uh, useful to you. Goodbye from ACPG Mand and Dr. Nesmani. Please note down the channel address youtube.com slash ACPG Mand. And there is an email address ACPG at gmail.com. There are practice sessions in Concert Bridge and Entrance to Store in Dead Plab and USMLE material. The same channel, more than 80 videos have been uploaded so far, and nearly 9,500 hits have been made in the channel. Thank you.